You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Hello everyone. I am Neha from Malnad College of Engineering. Today, me and my teammates are going to do presentation on extendable hashing. Now, our teammate Sakshi will continue. Hope you all like it. First, let us see the contents of what we are going to cover today. The first is the introduction to extendable hashing. Then we are going to see some of the terms used in extendable hashing and then we'll see the working of extendable hashing and then we'll see an example on extendable hashing and then we'll see some of the key observations on extendable hashing and then we'll see some of the advantages on extendable hashing and at last we'll see some of the limitations on extendable hashing. the introduction of extendable hashing. Extendable hashing is a type of hash wherein the hash is treated as a bit string and using these bits we form a structure called tri that will be used for organizing data to the buckets. It was described by Ronald Fitchin in 1979. Rehashing is an incremental operation wherein we increase the directory size to handle the overflow of buckets and also we split the buckets. So the hash address is always incremented by 1 in order to rehash the buckets to handle overflow. All modern file systems use either extendable hashing or matrix for organization and searching in the files. Now let's see why do we need extendable hashing. In normal hashing, we obtain overflow chains. In order to avoid overflow chains, we use a dynamic hashing method called extendable hashing, wherein the directories and the buckets are used to hash data. It's a very flexible method wherein the hash function also experiences dynamic changes as and when the bucket overflows. Now, let us see some of the terminologies used in extendable hashing. The very first thing is the directories. These containers store pointers to the buckets. Each directory is given a unique ID which may change each time when expansion takes place. The hash function returns this directory ID which is used to navigate to the appropriate bucket. Number of directories is equal to 2 to the power of the global depth. Next is the buckets. They store the hashed keys. Directories point to the buckets. A bucket may contain more than one pointers to it if its local depth is less than the global depth. Next is global depth. It is associated with the directories. They denote the number of bits which are used by the hash function to categorize the keys. Global depth is equal to the number of bits in directory ID. And the next thing is local depth. It is the same as that of the global depth except for the fact that local depth is associated with the buckets and not the directories. Local depth in accordance to that of the global depth is used to decide the action that is to be performed in case an overflow occurs. Local depth is always less than or equal to the global depth. The next is the bucket splitting. When the number of elements in a bucket exceeds a particular size, then the bucket is split into two parts. And the next thing is the directory expansion. Directory expansion takes place when a bucket overflows. Directory expansion is performed when the local depth of the overflowing bucket is equal to the global depth. We'll see the structure of extendable hashing. This is the directory of address space 4. 
the value of k here is equal to 2 so 2 to the power 2 is equal to 4 hence 4 is the address space of this directory and 2 bits are used to denote the hash id in order to hash data to the buckets so this is the directory so this directory points to the buckets which is used to hash data depending on the hash function and also depending on the global depth of the directories and the local depth of, of the buckets so these are the buckets and here the global depth is always associated with directory so here the global depth is 2 and that is why the hash id is 2 which will be used to hash data to the buckets and the next is about the local depth local depth is always associated with the buckets so here 2 is the local depth of each of these buckets and depending on these factors and also depending on the size of the bucket data will be hashed and retrieved from the buckets so this is it about the structure of extendable hashing and also about the introduction and some of the terminologies of extendable hashing now Neha shall continue with the working and an example on extendable hashing I'll explain about how extendable hashing works. First, we need to analyze the data elements and convert into the binary format. Next, we have to check the hash function that is global depth of the directory and identify the directory. After that, navigate to the bucket pointed by the directory. After insertion and the tackling overflow condition during the data insertion, data will transfer to the bucket and finally data is stored or hashed. Now let us consider a prominent example of hashing that is 16, 4, 6, 22, 24, 10, 31, 7, 9, 20 and 26. Let us assume bucket size has 3 and the hash function Suppose the global depth is x, then the hash function returns x LSBs, that is least significant bit. First, we need to calculate the binary form of each of the given number. Initially, the global depth and the local depth is always 1. Therefore, hashing frame look like this. Next, let's insert number 16. The binary format of 16 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 and the global depth is 1. The hash function returns 1 LSP which is 0. Hence, 16 is mapped to the directory 0. Next is inserting 4 and 6. Both 4, 1, 0, 0 and 6, 1, 1, 0 have 0 in their LSP. Hence, they are mapped to the directory 0. Inserting 22. The binary form of 22 is 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Its LSP is 0. The bucket pointed by the directory 0 is already full, hence overflow occurs. When overflow condition occurs, there are two cases. In case 1, the local depth is equal to the global depth and it needs to perform the bucket splitting operation and directory expansion. In case 2, local depth is less than the global depth then it just needs to perform the bucket splitting operation. Here, as the local depth is equal to the global depth, the 
directory gets expanded and the overflowing bucket gets split. The global depth is incremented by 1, that is, the global depth becomes 2, and hence rehashed with respect to the LSV2. 16, 4 are mapped to the directory 00, and 6 and 22 are mapped to the directory 10. Next is inserting 24 and 10. Both are hashed based on directories with the 00 and 10. Inserting 31, 7, 9. All of these elements have either 01 or 11 in their LSVs. Hence, they are mapped on the bucket pointed out by 01 and 11. Next is inserting 20. Insertion of data element 20 will again cause the overflow condition. As the local depth is equal to the global depth, directory expansion takes place along with the bucket splitting. Elements present in the overflowing buckets are rehashed with the new global depth that is 3. At last, we need to insert 26. As global depth is 3, hence LSV of 26 is 3. Therefore, 26 best fit in the bucket pointed out by the directory 0, 1, 0. Here again overflow occurs, but the local depth is less than the global depth. As local depth is less than the global depth, here the directories are not doubled, but only the bucket is split and the elements are rehashed. Finally, we obtain the output of hashing of the given list of number. And the next slide is explained by Kushala. Key observations. Here are some of the key observations that we need to know in the process of extendable hashing. A bucket will have more than one pointers pointing to it if its local depth is less than the global depth. As we have seen from the example above, a bucket will have more than one pointer to it if it the local depth is less than the global depth of the directory. When overflow condition occurs in a bucket, all the entries in the bucket are rehashed in the new local depth. If local depth of the overflowing bucket is equal to the global depth, only then directories are doubled and the global depth is incremented by 1. The size of the bucket cannot be changed after the data insertion process begins. This means when the bucket overflows, the bucket has to be split into two and the value of the local depth has to be incremented by one. Therefore, all the entries in the split bucket will, have, will be rehashed according to the new local depth of the bucket. Now, in the bucket splitting process, if the local depth of the bucket has to be split is equal to the global depth of the directories, then the directory size has to be doubled, that is, the global depth is incremented by 1, and the local depth value of the two new buckets that have been split from the overflowed bucket should also be incremented by 1, that is, if global depth has was 2, then the directory size would be 4. So now, if local depth is also 2 during the overflow condition in a bucket, then global depth and the local depth will be 3 and the directory size will be 2 power 3 that is 8. The directory size is doubled. But during the overflow condition, if the local depth of the bucket is less than the global depth of the directory, then just the local depth will be incremented in order to accommodate data. The size of the bucket cannot be changed after st starting the data insertion process. Advantages Data retrieval is less expensive. The retrieval of data will not cost much. No problem of data loss since the storage capacity increases dynamically. This is a dynamic hashing process, so the data won't be lost because the storage capacity will be increasing when the bucket overflows. 
with dynamic changes in hashing function associated old values are rehashed with respect to the new hash function the hashing function keeps changing dynamically in order to allocate space for new data and also the old data will be rehashed according to the new hash of function so by this means all the data will be stored in one particular order according to the current hash function now Ganavi will continue about limitations of extendable hashing. Thank you. Now I will explain the limitations of extendable hashing. First limitation is the directory size may increase significantly if several records are hashed on the same directory while keeping the record distribution non-uniform. Second is size of the every bucket is fixed next memory is wasted in the pointers where the global depth and local depth differences becomes drastic next it is this method is complicated to the codes 